So let's move on to other types of septal defects, AV canal defects. So as you know, many cases of AV canal can be associated with Down syndrome. Here's a classic case of a complete canal. The AV canal defects involve the mitral valve and the trichester valve, various versions of being a single valve or sort of almost a single valve. Often there's an atrial septal defect in the primum septum and an inlet ventricular septal defect. You could have normal versus complete canals, incomplete or, or partial, and then transitional canals, and I'll talk about each of them. But very importantly, before we talk about the details, this is another uh, tomographic ultrasound imaging example. This shows you why when you're scanning the four-chamber view, it's very important not just to scan at one level, but to move back and forth, because it's easy to miss AV canal defects you could see in which portion, I guess it's this one right here, you could see the AV canal defect. But if you look here, it looks normal. Here it looks normal. It's only in one portion. So the point being that when you're doing a fortune chamber review, unless you sweep back and forth a little bit, you may be missing a canal defect. That's an important point. So let's talk about uh, different types of AV canal defects. Complete, uh, transitional, and partial. Complete has a large ventricular septal defect, a partial has no ventricular septal defect, and a transitional has a sort of a medium-sized ventricular septal defect that there's a pressure gradient across it. And that has clinical relevance after birth, which I'll talk about. So this is a complete canal right here. You could see one big AV valve, large ventricular septal defect at the inlet septum, and this is a primum atrial septal defect as well. Of course, to look at this, we want to look from different views, but to see the AV valves, this is a nice view to see the AV valves. So when an AV canal is a complete canal with a large ventricular septal defect, what's very important, the next step from our perspective in terms of looking at the heart is whether it's a balanced defect. In other words, I'm, as I'm scanning, I'm thinking to myself, is this a defect that down the road after the baby is born, maybe around four to six months of age, the surgeon will be able to septate, close the ventricular septal defect, and have enough tissue to form a tricuspid valve on the RV side, and enough tissue to form a mitral valve on the LV side, and is, are the ventricles gonna be adequately formed? Is it well balanced? If there's not a balanced canal, and if it's an unbalanced canal, then that's the prognosis is much worse, because many of those cases will not be able to undergo two ventricle repair, they go down the single ventricle palliation approach, which has a much more guarded long-term prognosis, multiple surgeries, much more complicated and difficult for the patient and the family. So whether an AV canal, a complete canal is balanced or not is very important. And of course, we also look for valvar regurgitation. The more valvar regurgitation we see early on, like at 20 weeks, the worse the prognosis, and it also, also goes along often with ventricular dysfunction, more primitive ventricles. Complete canals, of course, when we see those, we need to think about trisomy 21, and many of these patients do undergo amniocentesis. Uh, now, a partial canal, as I mentioned, is, I showed you this slide before, it's a lower part of the atrial septum is deficient. So this is the partial canal. They almost always will have a cleft in the mitral valve, which sometimes you could see regurgitation, sometimes that's difficult to see before birth. The AV valves are at the same level. So this is a partial canal because the, the inlet ventricular septum is intact. And here's normal in comparison. So these partial canals are different from a complete canal. Complete canal needs surgery within the first uh, four to six months. If we wait on those babies and don't do surgery, they can develop pulmonary vascular disease, much worse prognosis. So when it, whenever you have a fetus with trisomy 21, if you think the heart's normal prenatal, I always recommend doing an echocardiogram after birth to make sure we don't want to miss an AV canal because sometimes they don't present, and then if you wait too late, the prognosis is much worse. In contrast, the partial canal has no ventricular septal defect. These, these behave like atrial septal defects, like secundum atrial septal defects, where we don't need to do surgery. We don't need to close them until several years after birth. When the neurologic prognosis is much better, we don't want to go on bypass in the first six months if you don't need to. These babies sometimes develop heart failure, but that's unusual. More typically, they're doing just fine. Maybe they need a little Lasix and we repair them a few years of age and the prognosis is outstanding. Sometimes the cleft in the mitral valve can be stitch closed at the same time. 
And again, there is a, maybe an association with trisomy 21. So a transitional canal, you could see the prima atrial septal defect, and you could get a sense of a small ventricular septal defect that's largely closed. We discriminate or distinguish between a complete canal and a transitional because a complete canal requires surgery in the first six months, usually four to six months. Transitional canals, by definition, because the ventricular septal defect is smaller, these babies are not at the same increased risk for pulmonary vascular disease if you wait beyond a year of age. So it's, it's a different type, it's a very different disease, but these babies do require open heart surgery to close. Sometimes the repair can be a little more, even more complicated than a complete canal, depending on the anatomy of the mitral intracostal valves and the anatomy in the ventricular septum here. In all cases, all types of canals, of course, we want to listen old slide, as you get old clips. You want to look for AV valve regurge, mitrotrexus valve regurge. You want to get a sense, like you could see here, it's not completely well balanced. So sometimes it takes a lot of effort to figure out, is it well enough balanced? Is it balanced or not? Is how well balanced is it in terms of trying to predict whether these babies will be candidates for two ventricle repair with a very good prognosis versus single ventricle pair with a much more guarded prognosis. Here you could see again a transitional canal. This has a very large prima atrial septal defect and a very small ventricular septal defect. Here's another transitional canal. You could actually see on the left side, you could see the, the valve art tissue partially closing the ventricular septum, and you can see mitral regurgitation over here is from the cleft. So all forms of AV canal defects, we're not looking just at the AV canal. Of course, whenever you have one heart defect, there may be other defects. And particular AV canal defects are often associated with other defects, sometimes with complex forms of heterotaxy, but sometimes just another, some, one other abnormality. So we always want to see what are the veins, the pulmonary veins looking like? Is there a common atrium? Is it balanced or not? And then we want to look at the outflow tracts. Is there tetralogy flow? AV canal, te tetralogy AV canal is a very common combination, particularly in the context of trisomy 21. We want to look at, is there, is there double outlet right ventricle? Here's the aorta coming off the RV and the pulmonary arteries coming off the LV with transposition. The pulmonary arteries may be a little small. So it's not just good enough to pick up a diagnosis of AV canal. You also then want to see if there's anything else going on that's going to impact how this baby is going to do. AV canal defects, if everything else looks perfect, they could have one surgery at four to six months of age and then have a normal cardiovascular prognosis for the most part, with a small percentage of cases having, requiring more surgery. Or if, there's, if it's unbalanced or there's significant valvular regurgitation or there's outflow tract abnormalities, the prognosis can be much worse. So when we counsel patients early on whether to continue a pregnancy, it's important to know what other abnormalities may be present.